name is Sue Carter and my colleague Bill Fisher and I are going to show you how we make moulded candles. First a few references to safety. Always wear something to protect yourself, your clothing, so I'm going to wear an apron um, just in case you get any wax splashed on you. Uh, it not only hurts if, you, if it gets on your skin uh, but it's certainly not very good for your clothing either. We always use stainless steel jugs for our wax. We've got these and we've also got some smaller ones which are uh, Turkish coffee pots. So if you've got friends going to Greece or Turkey for their holidays, make sure they pick some of these up for you. Uh, and then secondly, always wear um, gloves, safety gloves, insulated gloves, when you are handling anything to do with the hot jugs. And I'm going to show you the bain marie that we use uh, for keeping our wax melted. This is, happens to be an old fish kettle uh, and it's got a tray at the bottom which, which stops the bottom of the, the jugs from being in direct contact with the hot plates below. I'm going to show you some essential items that you need when you're making moulded candles. First of all, a pair of scissors, always useful for when you're needing for cutting the wick. Uh, some glue tack, in case there is, the hole in the mould is bigger than your wick. Uh, and so it stops the wax from draining through. Two very useful items for threading the wick through the candle. One for smaller candles and one for longer ones. Both have a loop on the end that you can uh, attach the wick to and pull it through the candle mould. I have two loops here, two metal loops, and also some wooden sticks, uh, which are cocktail sticks supported uh, at either end with um, elastic bands and these rest on the candle mould to prevent the wick from falling back into the candle. And then finally I've got two wooden blocks. These are at the other end of the candle mould to rest so that it lays flat on the surface. One other essential item that we use is a digital temperature controller. That keeps the water bath that we're keeping our wax melted in at a constant temperature. This is very important. The temperature we use is 76. Wax mel melts at 64, uh, but by keeping the water bath at 76, that keeps our, our wax nice and fluid for when we're making the candles. We're going to talk today largely about silicon moulds. Uh, this is how we keep ours. Uh, first of all, it's in a plastic bag to protect it from any dust. Secondly, we store them uh, with a card around them, with the bands, to keep them secure. And we also store them upright so that they are uh, protected and not going to get squashed. So this is very important. Here's an example of a, a candle mould that hasn't been kept well. Um, you can see around the middle where there's somebody's left an elastic band too tight uh, and it's all squashed and distorted. So these are expensive, they're not cheap, so it's important to keep them um, as well as you can uh, and protected as you can. When you're buying them, look for the ones with the thicker walls. These are much more rigid. You can see one here which has got the thinner walls to it. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just not much more easy to keep the thicker walled one in a good condition. The other thing that's important to remember, sometimes with candle moulds such as this one, it's difficult to tell what the model is actually of. Uh, so once you've made it, it's important to write on uh, just what it is. This one's a pine cone. When you buy your candle moulds, sometimes they have a slit down the side which helps you to thread the wick through it. And sometimes there's no slit at all, such as this one. Uh, and this is why you need the piece of wire, the long piece of wire I showed earlier, to thread the wick through. Silicon moulds are, are expensive, but they do last. This one's 20 years old, uh, and you can see it's on its last legs, uh, but it is still just held together, and you can make perfectly good candles with it. It's a Christmas tree, been very well used, a popular mould. Some of the better candle moulds have got a groove in the bottom, so when you've threaded the wick through, you can put the wick down here, and then the mould itself will lie flat on the surface uh, without having to have any other support. talk about wick which is obviously an important part of any candle. Like the moulds we keep our wick in plastic bags to protect it from dust and dirt. Um, whether it's a roll or a 50 metre reel or a 5 metre length that you may have got with the candle mould, um, all treated the same, keep them, keep them well covered. 
The good suppliers will provide um, the wick size for your candle, um, but it's important if you don't know what wick size to use uh, to have a trial. So here I have got three identical candles, each made with a different size wick. A small wick, a medium and a large wick. And we're going to burn them now for about 20 to 30 minutes uh, so that you can see the, the difference and what effect it has. Whenever you're burning a candle, make sure it is on a metal or base that's not going to be flammable. Okay. So now we've got the candles, I'm just going to light them. and we'll leave them to burn. After 70 minutes, the candle with a small wick is starting to sit in a pool of wax and is likely to drown itself. The one with the large wick is starting to run down one side and the medium wick is burning nicely. Right, now we're ready to make our candle. Uh, and the mould I've chosen is the one for this pine cone uh, and the reason for that is it, it's a delicate mould, I like it uh, and also there's lots of sort of features in here uh, which are important for me to show you how to get the wax to go into all of the edges of the, uh, the mould. Uh, so here it is, I've got it here and what we need to do first of all is to get the wick for it. Um, so I've got, the, the wick I've got is the one recommended by the manufacturer, take it out of its bag take a length, um, probably um, a couple of centimetres either end longer than the, the mould itself, and cut it. Uh, that's fine, I'll put the wick away, uh, and then I need to dip the wick. So the important thing to do is to dip the wick to make sure it's well soaked uh, with the wax before you uh, start making the candle, and you can see the surface is very small bubbles coming uh, where the air is coming out of the wick as the wax is soaking into it. That's important so that when you burn the candle uh, the wick doesn't splutter. That we uh, dipped earlier is now hard and, and, and stiff. Um, we can thread it into the candle mould. But first of all what you need to do is make sure that the seam that it is here, which you can see, is very firmly um, closed uh, and all through the candle you can so look to see uh, that you can't actually see the seam and so, so it's matching well all through it, which this one is. Um, I've got the candle surrounded by some, some stiff card uh, and then held together with three elastic bands so that it's firmly held together in all places. So I'm now going to push the wick through the, through the hole. Because it's a very stiff wick and the the hole in the candle base is quite big, I can do this easily. Had it not been, and it was a smaller hole, uh, I would have threaded the wick into my needle uh, and pulled it through that way. This candle mould is one that has a groove at the bottom, so I can just fold my wick down and this will place it firmly on the surface uh, without it wobbling. The other thing I'm now using is this device, which I showed you earlier, the metal hooks um, which I put in the, over the um, candle base and just curl the wick around it so I can now make sure that the wick is firmly in place in the middle of the candle. Now we're ready to pour the candle. So I'm going to put my gloves on. Take my jug of wax, which has been in, in the Bain Marie safely. Uh, I'm just going to pour gently into the candle mould. I'm going to come right to the top. Okay. Now, because this is a complex mould uh, and there's lots of little features of it, what I'm going to do is just tap the sides so that the w wax will go into all of the little corners and crevices of the mould. You can see some little air bubbles coming to the surface when I do that. OK, 
Okay, here we are. You can see that the surface of the candle is starting to set, uh, and there's a hole here. And what I'm going to do is make that hole bigger, and I'm going to top it up. You can see that the whole thing has contracted a bit. If you don't do this, you could end up with a hole in the base of the candle. I'm going to continue topping up until the candle is almost completely set. A few hours later, uh, and our candle that we have made originally, the uh, pine cone, is now well and truly cold and set. Uh, so I'm just going to unwrap it and unmold it uh, from the silicon mold. So take off the clip, with the elastic bands, take off its cover. And I'm now going to open it. Be very careful with this. As you can see the mould is actually very much um, a lot of detail in it. So you have to un unwrap it very carefully and just help it out gently. And there we are. Beautiful candle. See all the detailing in the, in the petal, in the um, leaves and um, fronds of the pine cone. Um, and all we need to do now is trim the bottom and the wick. I'd just like to show you one other type of mould, and this one hasn't got a hole in the bottom for the wick at all. Uh, so with this, what you need to do is open it and push the wick right into the centre of the candle, like that, um, and then do the thing up. So we'll put the card around, making sure that it's over the seam followed by our bands, which are holding it tight, but not too tight that it causes a distortion of the candle. So we then need to check that the seam is, is level and all matching all the way up, which it is. But the other important thing here is because you've forced a hole in the, in the seam of the, of the silicon mould, uh, there's, there's space there where the wax may pour through when you, when you pour the candle. Uh, so that's where the blue tack comes in. So you need to put a small amount of blue tack uh, around the seam and the candle end and the wick end um, so that the wax doesn't flow through when you're pouring it. Just like that. And that's where the, one of the other devices that I showed you earlier comes into play, because this won't sit flat on a surface. Uh, so you need to just pop that through there like that, and it will sit like that. Now, if you purchase one of these moulds, which doesn't have a slit in it at all, uh, this is where this piece of wire with the hole at the end, the, the rather long needle, uh, comes into play. Uh, so you thread your wick through the hole, Pull a fair amount of it through. Yep. Need to take a piece of the wick off. Wick's off. And then pour, put the metal wire through the hole of the candle. And push it through. And when it's through, What I've done here is I've cut quite a long piece of, of wick uh, because if I want to make two candles or even more um, what you need to do is to have it so that when I've pulled the candle out at the end of the process I've got some more wick already pre-threaded. So this is where this piece of, of wood uh, comes into play uh, because we don't have um, a groove in the bottom of this candle so I can just pull the wick through here and this can stand like that, and I can suspend my, my wick in the middle and pour my candle. So we hope you've enjoyed this short video, and we also hope to see you at the National Honey Show in 2017.
here a candle made by the other method of holding the wick in See, the centre. the ridge here. The here at the I just wanted to show you that this is just a little bit more difficult in uh, getting you can use the wick out because the, the, the sticks 